Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I apologize for my voice. I've been a little bit under the weather for the last couple of days. When we left off last time, we had filled in our resin geode with glass glitter, crushed crystal, mica powders, and mylar flakes. We did a little blending, and we gave our fantasy geode a pretty finished look. But since this is my first ever geode with you, I'd like to go a little further and do a tiny bit of embellishing before adding the clear top coat. Now, after turning off the camera last time, I waited a couple of hours and I removed the tape that had been around the edge of the geode in order to let the edge of the resin round off and smooth itself out and also to remove any sort of crushed glass and glitter that would have stuck to the tape and therefore transferred to the next layer, which I didn't want. And also I needed to remove the tape so that I could easily embellish the rest of this piece. Now, the first thing that I want to do is to build a bit of a glitter dam around this section. I just want to make it a little bit higher along the edge so that when I pour the clear coat, the resin can't come and cover this area. I'd like this section to remain exposed. So for that, for the dam area, I think I'm just going to use five minute epoxy. It'll work quickly and I won't have to wait for a full day before I can come in and do more work. Now, just like our resin, the five minute epoxy is also two parts that you pour out and then mix together. The only difference is I don't really worry about bubbles when I'm mixing this stuff. But you have to make sure that you have a good uniform mix of this as well. Now, like before, this is one of those things that I hope is gonna work the way I want. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> So I'm going with it. My plan is to really force some of this down into the crystals that are already here to prevent the new resin from oozing through and coming into this midsection. Really trying to fill in as many of the nooks and crannies as I can on the edge. And then I'm also sort of sculpting a little bit out, getting these little points a little better defined. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to sprinkle some glitter on top. Pat it down just a little bit, not too much, because I don't want to flatten it back down. And now I'll let this excess fall onto this piece of paper. So now I'm hoping that this has a nice enough relief off of the surface of the main geode to prevent the top coat from coming over. We'll see. Now the quick set epoxy will take hours to fully cure, but after half an hour, it is already set to a point where it's pretty hard. None of this is going to move, so I can certainly work around it now. What I'd like to do is add a few hand-painted lines. Again, for the full geode-making experience, I know some of you are like, no, 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 don't touch it, leave it alone. I know, I know, we can make more. But I, for this one, I really want to try everything, so I want to add a couple lines, okay? Just, just bear with me. Okay, 
Now, very often you'll see the lines that get added are white or black or other colors as well. Now, I don't think I'd like either black or white on this one. I don't want to add more color variety to this. So I'm going to stick with two colors that are already present in this piece. I'm going to go with gold and purple. I'm going to use these awesome paint pens or paint markers by Posca. These were sent to me by a wonderful viewer and patron. Thank you so much, Alyssa. I love these. Now, the beauty of these Posca markers is that they write on most anything. And unlike so many other paint pens, I'm sure you've tried some, they don't seem to clog up. Every single time I pick one up, it is ready to go. You gotta love that. Now, these come in a variety of widths. I'm using their fine tip, or what they call PC1M. Now, I got lucky. The purple in this set is the right purple for this. You know how a purple can be too red or too blue? This is the perfect purple for this. And the gold I had already planned on using, so I made sure to mix up this particular mica color to match this gold. I originally toyed with drawing right over these dimensional lines that I had put down and are now underneath this first layer of resin. But I think that instead, I'm going to complement them and draw alongside a couple of them. Here, I have a gold line that I lost on this side. It got covered up. So I'll start out by adding that. And then I think I want to run a line alongside this dimensional line. And then when you're doing these, you don't have to worry about making them straight. In fact, the more crooked they look, I think the better. Now, if you make a mistake, this is removable for a while. You can wipe it off. But then after a while, it'll dry to a point where it's permanent and it won't come off. So it'll be safe to pour resin over, for example. Well, how about outside of the Jersey area? Now, I'm not loving how this turned out. I think I want it to come more to a point like I did here. So this is just um, one of my little micro brushes that I've just wet with a little drop of water. And I still have the ability to wipe this away for now. I won't have that ability for long, but for a few minutes I do. And now I want a gold line on this side of this blue line. For my last gold line, I'm going to just run it along this blue line, very close to it. Now for a couple of purple lines. And I love that these markers are nice and thin so that these lines don't dominate. Seriously, this purple is just the perfect purple to go with this. I love it. I decided that I wanted to just to make this line just a hair thicker. Now, these markers aren't super expensive, but they're not super cheap either. I'm going to recommend that if you're going to buy a set, buy the fine point set because if you want a thicker line, you can always do what I'm doing and just make your original thin line a little thicker. But if you buy the thick set and you want a thin line, well, that's gonna be a little harder. <laughs> so if you can only get one set, get the thin set. It'll be more versatile for you, I think. And how about a third line? Because sometimes I feel like this band, as beautiful as it is, kind of dominates. Maybe a little too much? I don't know. I've been on the fence about that. So this way, this purple is kind of 
toning it down a little bit on the edge while not obliterating it. So I think it's a really good compromise. I love drawing on resin. It's way fun. I just love the feel of these markers. They just, it's like, it's like they're like skating over the resin. It's awesome. A couple of hours have passed and I'm confident that the Posca paint lines are fully dry. The epoxy under the glitter is cured, so we can now flood this with a nice thick layer of resin. Now, while I was waiting, I went ahead and taped up my edge again to contain my top coat. Now, ordinarily, before adding a top coat, I would sand this layer down a bit to give it some tooth so that the new layer can grab on. But since this layer is so irregular, with raised mylar flakes and it's got a glitter edge to hold on to here and some crushed glass here and more glitter here. I think it's irregular enough for the new layer to grab on. Now, unlike the first layer where I used liquid diamonds as my resin to give me extended work time, this time I'm going to use Clearcast 7050 which is my go-to resin. I don't need a ton of work time for this layer, though this is still going to give me at least 45 minutes, which is way more than I need. And more importantly, for a little impatient me, <laughs> this will reach a touchable cure in just eight hours because I really, really don't want to have to wait very long. <laughs> By the way, it is perfectly fine to have different resins for different layers in a piece, as long as you've let each of them cure before adding the next. Now, like Liquid Diamonds, Clearcast is a two to one ratio resin. So I'm going to mix up 90 milliliters of resin for this piece, which means I'll want 30 milliliters of hardener and 60 milliliters of resin. Giving me the 90, which will cover this piece well. I'll mix it for three to four minutes and let it sit for about five minutes to degas a bit, to let some of the bubbles escape. There is something wonderfully satisfying about pouring resin on a piece you love. When it's a resin you trust, you just know it's going to give the piece a whole new wonderful look. And I know this will give me a beautiful, shiny, rock-hard finish. So I have to say I'm a bit excited. <laughs> In a couple of hours, after the resin has really set quite a bit and started to fully cure, I'll come back to remove the tape and allow the edge to smooth itself out and round off without being able to drip down the side anymore. It'll be too hard to do that, but soft enough to correct itself on the edge. It's now been a couple of hours, so I am going to remove the tape. When I do it, I pull and I pull upwards so that the resin doesn't have a tendency to fall toward the edge of my piece. Now, this is one of those things that after you've done it's gonna look kind of not great at first. You just have to have faith that the resin will pull back in 
and correct itself. It's gonna look kind of jagged when you first remove the tape. Don't panic, leave it alone. It knows what to do. <laughs> That's the best way for me to explain that. So now a couple of hours more, the edge has completely corrected itself and rounded without you having to do anything. I know you'll be really tempted after you pull off the tape to want to push in some of the edges that are sticking out. Don't do it really. Honestly, leave the resin alone. It'll correct itself. It really, really knows what it's doing. <laughs> you just have to have faith and just step away and let it do its thing. And it will reward you with a really, really pretty rounded edge. Now, I have some raised areas because I had some stones here. I mean, well, crushed crystal here. So that kind of makes it a little lumpier, but that's fine because that's part of the geode. But as far as the edge itself, that's really nice and rounded and it didn't drip down the sides and I didn't have to do much to protect it other than put that piece of tape around and then pull it off toward the end. So our geode is now done. Let's take some close-up looks at it. And I am tickled sparkly pink with it. <laughs> I kind of can't wait to make a few more. What do you think of it? Are you maybe a little less afraid of jumping in and playing with resin? If you haven't already, how about of making a geode? Let me know your thoughts on that and more. Give this a thumbs up if you'd like to see more things to do when painting with resin. What videos draw you in? If this channel helps you or entertains you, please share this with friends and consider being a patron of mine on Patreon or contributing in other ways to make more videos possible. See the video description box for ways to participate in that and for links to everything I used as well as a coupon code for both resins that I used. When shopping on Amazon, I'd greatly appreciate you clicking on one of my links to the site before you pay. Doing that costs you nothing and helps my channel a little bit each time. As always, thank you for being my art family. I am so lucky to have you as viewers and subscribers. Go let your creative nature shine and be kind to somebody today. See you soon. Bye now.